This episode is brought to you by Jing's Mortgage Team. Jing's Mortgage Team is a team of real estate and mortgage professionals whose mission is to help anyone with their real estate needs. If you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, refinance your home, have credit issues, or in need of an investment loan, we can definitely help you. If you're looking for a real estate agent, we know the best of the best real estate agents. Visit the link below for more information. Michael Miguel, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, come on Secret Sauce with Hamilton Lau. For our viewers that are just tuning in, this uh, Secret Sauce with Hamilton Lau is a podcast that looks to peel back the curtain a little bit on industry professionals and what makes them successful. And today we have a very special guest in Mike, uh, Michael Miguel, who is one of the top listing agents in New York City. Uh, he has something along the lines of uh, 36 listings of as of to date uh, uh, last 12 months. So it takes a very special, hardworking, diligent person to be able to rack up so many listings. He's an amazing agent. And I'd love to talk to Michael today about how he became so awesome. So Michael, thank you so much again. No, thank you very much for having me over. I really appreciate the opportunity. And I hope that my intention today is to provide as much value as possible to agents that are looking to make the transition and do real estate full time. Oh yeah. Michael Miguel is a team leader, um, the Michael Miguel team. Um, he has been in the industry for, I think, almost 10, 10 years? Eight years. Eight, eight years. years. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So eight years, he has racked up a lot of soft skills. He is, again, any zip code that you look with Michael Miguel, he's always in the top 10%. Um, so, Michael, I'd love to talk to you about your, your beginnings. You know, how, how, were, how did you grow up? Yeah, well, thank you for asking. Uh, definitely. Well, everything started back when I arrived to this country. When I came, I was 17 years old. And um, where did you come from? South America, Bolivia. Oh. And I arrived to New York when I was 17. And I remember seeing, because in my country, you can have lunch, breakfast, and dinner with $3, right? You can have a full meal the whole day. And I remember seeing $1,500 check in, in the desk on a table from a family member that was paid for two weeks. And I saw $1,500. Wow, that's a lot of money. Mm. I said to myself, right? $1,500. So the first thing I did was to look for a job at 17 here. And I found a job uh, cleaning bathrooms wow. in Manhattan in a warehouse. Oh, wow. So I was, I think I was getting $270 a week, which for me was great because I didn't have any expenses, any responsibilities. So I was just spending the money, right? But that's how I started seeing the value of money. In my country, I didn't do any bathrooms or anything, but I started doing that here. Did you speak any English at the time when you came to America? Yeah, yeah, uh, a little bit like I do now. <laughs> it's not my first language, as you can say, uh, you can see. Uh, at the same time, I was able to communicate with people. Mm. But I started seeing this, um, you know, I started seeing opportunities that you can earn money here. And um, I started applying for jobs. I didn't stay there, of course, cleaning the bathrooms in that warehouse, but I actually went to the warehouse and worked there for a couple of years. And eventually, I stayed there in that warehouse for a long time, 14 years. I so, was yeah. young. So, so you prom got promoted in a way. I got promoted right. in a way, right. yeah. Uh, I got promoted uh, 14 years uh, in that warehouse. And then I, I guess I, I, I was comfortable. I was just living the life that everybody was living. You know, I was earning about $500 um, a week, right? You do the math for a year. And um, it was okay. It was okay because I was young. I was like... 18, 19, 20 years old, 21. Mm. But then everything started to change because I started to, to you know, uh, being an adult. So I, I, I met my wife. We got married. How old and, did you get married? Uh, 24. Oh. 24 years old. Uh, we got married and uh, we had a child, right? 
So now the $500 wasn't enough. So I remember having this conversation with my wife about me changing jobs, right? That job was not giving me what I was supposed to, to get to feed my family, right? And I didn't know. I didn't know what to do, to be honest. Um, I was in the wrong path. I was living the wrong life, I gotta say. Um, most of my time was was used playing video games. Most of my time was used watching TV. Most of my time was used drinking alcohol. Most of my time was used just hanging out with friends and nothing, right? Really not doing anything uh, for, for myself. Kind of living your life at whatever makes you happy day to day type of thing. Yeah, like the instant gratification, right? That we all always speak about. Um, but then, something changed because my daughter she was small we used to live in a one in a studio one bedroom apartment a studio slash one bedroom apartment because it was a studio converted to a one bedroom and then something else happened i had my son right so now we were in the studio converted to a one bedroom apartment and two cats so it was very small i think this setup was bigger than my my apartment to be honest and and I, I couldn't I couldn't be there anymore so I knew I need to I needed to make a change I was 29 at that time but I didn't know what to do yet until my daughter said something to me and you know when something happens in your life and you have this wake-up call my daughter said we went to Bloomingdale's and she sat in a big sofa and she said papi why cannot we have a big sofa like this you know what my response internally was? Because I'm a lazy guy. I don't want to work. I don't want to find a job, right? And I'm, I'm not looking to better myself. That was my internal response. And she said, I want a sofa like this big. It was huge sofa. And we didn't have that at home. Sometimes we had to sit in the floor to watch the TV because the sofa was just for two people. It was too small. The where, where were you living at the time? In that studio, yeah. one bedroom where, apartment. Where? Where was it? In... Uh, Jamaica. Oh, wow. Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, Queens, Jamaica, New York. Queens. Jamaica, Queens. And uh, it was a rented place, right? And and you were still you were at the warehouse at the time. I was at the warehouse still with two kids. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know what I was gonna do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I said, okay, so I gotta do something, right? So I told one of my friends these stories. It happened to be Edwin right? Edwin, uh, he's part of the team. And he said, Mike, you can do better than this. You definitely can do better than this. I'm going to give you a book. In my life, I have read a book. I always read news about sports. That's it, right? So he gave me a book and I read that book. It's called The Breakout by Joel Austin, right? And he's very religious. I, I, I believe in God, but I'm not, you know, very religious. And I started reading that book. The first page changed my thinking at the beginning, right? What was on that first page? That first page was telling a story about people that are looking to be always at the front just because, but then if you just, if you're patient enough, if you're in the back of the line, it's okay. You're going to get to the front eventually, right? So that just got my attention at the beginning. So. Your path is gonna is gonna come, right? And you just have to believe and trust. And then I started reading the whole book and I finished the book very soon. That was the first book. Did, did you feel that you were in the back of the line at the time and that it was gonna you that you deserved to be in the front and that you were you were destined to Great be question. Front? I believe that I wasn't even in the line. Right? I wasn't even doing the line. I was just living life uh in autopilot, I guess, with not thinking about being better or forming that line to get somewhere. Um, I was just not doing anything for myself, right? So now, year to date, if you go to my home office, I have a bunch of books there and I'm reading about 50 books a year for self-development, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be better. Uh, to have a stronger mindset. And, and right now I'm reading a book to be a better father. Last year, I read a book, uh, Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters. 
uh, for my daughter, right? That she's a teenager because I want to be better in every area. And right now I'm reading a, bo uh, a book uh, called uh, Boys Are Always Going to Be Boys, right? Because I'm working with my son now, right? So every aspect of my life, I want to be better. That's great. And I, I commend you for going down the reading path because when you look at successful people, it doesn't matter what industry, mm -hmm. reading is always the foundation of yeah. their daily life. Mm -hmm. um, yearly life, you know, they're always reading, learning, developing, you know, so I commend you definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I, I think reading is one of the best things you can do to uh, be better. So when I started reading that book, everything changed because I started buying more books and more books and mm -hmm. more books. And eventually what happened is I started learning a little bit more about myself. I started learning a little bit more about myself. I started to see that I was competitive right that everything that i do i do at a high level whether it was drinking or watching <laughs> tv or playing video games it was done at a high level right i was very disciplined at that time i used to work out as well i used to have my six pack you know work out very well i was very disciplined but i was disciplined in the wrong stuff mm -hmm. i mean working out is good but i was also disciplined watching tv and playing video games and drinking I was disciplined, but I was disciplined in the wrong stuff. Mm. So, and I think everybody is disciplined. They're just not dis disciplined in the right stuff, right? So I started learning this from books that I was reading and I started to find out a little bit more about myself. And I decided, you know what? One of my friends uh, said, let's get our real estate license. And I said, okay. And three of us went for the class. I was the first one getting it done. And that's how everything started, right? With my real estate uh, path. I joined a company, uh, Keller Williams, and I wanted, my goal was to have an award that said uh, congratulations or whatever. That was my main goal. I thought, okay, if I get that award, I'm going to be super happy, accomplished. I got that award and then nothing happened. So it wasn't about the award, actually. So I needed to dig deeper to find out what can I do to feel that satisfaction. When you right? say nothing, nothing happened, what do you mean? You mean the status, the feeling of satisfaction, do you yeah, mean money, yeah. do you mean? I think that at the beginning it was ego based. I want to get an award. I want to post it on Facebook. And I remember I did. I posted on Facebook about getting that award recognition, but it didn't really um, gave me the feeling of satisfaction, I guess. Right. It was it was a different feeling. It was like, OK, that's it. That's all I'm getting. Is there anything else? Is this what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? And, you know, having this feeling. How long did it take for you to get that award? Maybe about two years. Oh, OK. So you, you yeah. became a real estate agent. And then within two years time, you got like, you know, I got that award. What yeah. was the award? It was it was just a plaque that said, you know, I was a top producer. Right. That's it. And. If I go outside and try to sell it right now, I don't think anybody's going to give me $10 for it, mm. right? It was more ego-based. And I think that the industry is based on that a lot, right? On these awards. The pizzazz. Yeah. The, the, how, the, the fluff, how the marketing, but then it's like, what is it about that agent that makes that agent great? Exactly. Like, and, and, and yes, okay, it's a good thing to have and a bunch of awards in your wall, but it really, for me, as soon as I got that award, for me was, was not enough. So going back a little bit, you know, I, I decided to, um, I was doing part-time real estate at that time. I was still in the warehouse when well, I got so the award. You did part time and you still got the award. Exactly. That's yeah. incredible. So I'm thinking in your head, you're probably saying if I did this part time, what would happen if I yeah did full time? Exactly. So that came to my mind, right? If I got this award doing it part time, if I go full time, this is going to work. But to get to that award, it wasn't an easy thing because I used to work from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday and Saturdays from 5 a.m to maybe 12 or 1 p.m. on Saturday. So I, I had a full-time job. Plus, I had a, a daughter and a son, a newborn at that time that we were living. We had the crib 
the bunk bed, my daughter upstairs, my wife and I downstairs, and two cats, remember, right? That was our lifestyle when was I there, got that award. Was there ever a moment in your head where it's like, oh man, I'm kind of living day to day type of a thing, and it's like, off a bit, something happened to my family, it's like, you know, your what world, am I gonna do? Yeah, your world is kind of gonna fall yeah. apart. Did you ever have that? Feeling? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. And that was the, that was the wake up call, right? Because now I had responsibilities. I, I needed to improve myself in every, in every single way. And um, I had to figure it out a way that I can transition from my job, 12 hour job to real estate full time. And yes, I was getting the award, but it wasn't, it wasn't getting me out of, out of the, the work, the job. Financially. Financially, yes. Yes, it was adding a little bit of extra, but not as much. So I had to take a leap of faith. Um, I quit my job. Um, and then I started doing real estate full time. But I wasn't consistent with the paychecks. Right. So at some point, I end up broke. I was afraid of leaving the daily, the, the weekly paycheck to just go going with a commission base. I was afraid of that. That's why I didn't do that. But then I took the leap of faith. And at some point I didn't have money to pay for my cell phone bill. I had to pay $500 to AT&T to get my phone back, but I didn't have money. And I had my daughter, my son, my wife, and we were on food stamps. Wow. We were on food stamps. And, and this was, again, your, the hope to become an entrepreneur, be your own boss, you know, channel that discipline into something that can give you a bigger return. Yeah. And within mm -hmm. that process, it's like, oh man, you kind of had a little downswing before mm -hmm. your upswing. That was your yeah. experience. Because a lot of, I think a lot of our viewers, because this isn't a new story. Yeah. I think there's a lot of similar stories like this, you know, where it's like they're in that nine to five and it's like, stuck and they don't know what they should do to take that leap of faith that you, mm -hmm. that you took. I mean, do you have any advice for our viewers that are kind of stuck in that situation and, you know, not sure they should do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, do you have any advice? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's making the decision. The sooner you make the decision, the sooner you're going to succeed. If I had procrastinated at that time or maybe uh, overthink the decision of quitting my job, probably I would still be there like my other friends that are there still, right? That they, they didn't make that decision. I had difficult times. I really did because I didn't have those $500 to pay for the AT&T bill. I had to lend from somebody to pay that bill so I can continue to make my calls. Wow. And again, I had a son and a daughter, newborn. We were collecting food stamps. So I had to make that leap of faith. Right. And, and just believing that things are going to happen. If you work hard, you got to believe in yourself for sure. And, um, and that was very, a very dark moment in my life because, you know, I, we, we didn't have any money at all. My wife was going, uh, she was taking care of, uh, she was, um, doing babysitting for another kid. She was taking other kids to soccer games, to school of rock while my kids were being taken care of by my mother-in-law. And, and then half, half of the time my mother-in-law and then half of the time I was taking care of them after my job at night, right? So it was a very difficult moment at that time. So for me to transition to quitting my job and doing real estate full time, I had to have that leap of faith and use every single minute that I was awake to, to generate business. That was There's always in the back of your mind. Always, 24 hours a day. We, we have 24 hours in a day, 14, 40 minutes in a day. Every single minute for me was very important because I didn't want to go through what I went before, mm -hmm. not having money to even pay my cell phone bill, right? How, how long was that dark time, would you say, uh, ballpark, from quitting your job, getting some real estate to when it finally had somewhat of an upswing for you? It took 90 days. It was a cycle. Okay, so it was like a three-month dark time period. Where... Dark time period. 
Um, I believe that if you start working today, in 90 days, you're going to see the payoff, right? So this is always in my mind because I've been there. I never want to go back to that, right? Earning $500 a week, not having $500 to pay my cell phone bill to this year, uh, getting close to 500,000 GCI and listing four, five, six properties a month, every single month on a uh, consistent you said GCI, basis. You said? Yeah. Oh, can you? Sure. Gross commission income. Yeah. So, um, I never want to go back. Right. And I think about helping other agents do the same because I've been there and I know there's a lot of agents that are struggling right now, not being able to get out or make that decision. And that decision, that simple decision shapes your destiny for sure. For me, it did, you know, all the, the, the business that I have right now, we are on track to close 50 transactions. Year to day, today is July 7th, yes. 26 close and pendant. So it's amazing how I went from that to where we are right now, right? And I think anybody can just do it. Anybody can just make the decision and, and be able to perform at a high level. What would you say is the secret sauce to do that? Yeah. Great I, I have a, I have a, yeah. I have a uh, assumption Mm -hmm. but I'd love to hear it from you. Yeah. I think that everybody looks for that secret sauce, right? Everybody wants the magic pill or what they can do to sell a lot of properties. But it's about consistency, mindset, activities, action, discipline. If you just focus on the plan, which is prospecting for new business, lead follow-up on your business that you just got, appointments, negotiations, and systems, you're going to succeed. But before that, to be able to do that at a high level, you need to have time management. You need to know every single moment what you're doing with your time. From the moment you go to sleep, because the, the morning routine is very important, and it starts the night before. At what time you're going to sleep? What time you're waking up? What are you doing with your mindset, right? Every morning, are you meditating? Are you writing affirmations? I remember talking about affirmations. I remember writing down that I was going to earn $250,000 at one time. My goal was $100,000 at the beginning, then $250,000, now $500,000. And that's going to keep growing because the sky is the limit, right? Especially if you're an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, there's no limit. No limit. The, the limit that you have, it's in your mindset what you believe and affirmations and then just having a tight schedule. The tighter your schedule, the more freedom you have, mm. believe it or not. And also role playing. That's another uh, secret sauce. I, I always tell my agents that I, uh, that I coach, that I help in this transition in their lives is what happens if you're driving and someone calls you and said, Hey, I'm looking to sell my house. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Are you going to set up an appointment right away and then stop and then go to the appointment and then you're mad because you didn't get the listing? Or are you going to ask them a couple of qualifying questions, right? To be able to see if there's an opportunity, if there's a motivation, if um, what, what are the things that you need to do, right? In order to help this person. So uh, role playing scenarios with other agents it's helpful yeah. two hours two hours per day i used to role play with other agents at the beginning of my career to be able to set appointments and in, in a way you're preparing yourself for all the potential um, rebuttals or all the potential no's right i remember watching this movie boiler room yeah i don't know if you watched exactly, it was yeah. this fun quote that Ben Affleck said, he was mm -hmm. like, you're either getting sold on the product or you're getting sold why they don't want to buy the product. Yeah. And, you know, he said it in a very, actually, I, I feel like it was a little negative mm -hmm. the way he said it. It was almost very too aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. almost like even the person doesn't need it, you kind of force them to buy it. And yeah. to me, it's like, that's so far from the, the heart of what sales really is, right? However, the philosophy of the quote is, you know, still pure, right? It's like, 
you want to get to the close in a way, in, in a respectful yeah. and a tactful way, of course, but you want to get to the close in a, in a, in a uh, what is it called? Productive. Exactly. Right, where everybody is happy with the outcome. In alignment. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it seems like, you know, preparation. And also what I noticed was you were all in mm -hmm. at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Because there was no going back to the working at the warehouse. There was no, it, it almost seemed like, correct me if I'm wrong, it almost seemed like you were so against that conversation with your daughter again at, say, a toy store or mm -hmm. at another furniture store of, mm -hmm. Daddy, why can't I buy this? Exactly. That yeah. just, in a way, it seems like it motivated you and you know you didn't want to experience that again. No, Would you say all. that's correct? Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. That is 100% accurate. And, and um, going back to the presentation and the close, the close is an ending of a great presentation. It's going to come natural. It's going to come natural. And that's what I, if you know your listing presentation, you can just go ahead and ask any other questions and they're going to say no. Great. Let's sign the paperwork, right? As easy as that, as that because you already deliver everything and, and the, the people are going to make decisions if it makes sense mm. financially. Mm. So yeah, for me it was role play twice a day. I think that anybody can build the skills um, and, and be very, very good at conversations mm. uh, over the phone to be able to secure an appointment and not only that, convert that appointment into a listing. Mm. And I think that this industry is a little bit underserved because most agents are working with buyers, which is fine. But if you want to have more control of your time, you need the skills. You need the skills of a great presenter and be able to handle objections. An objection is just a question in the mind of a buyer. That's it. If they ask you, what's your commission? A lot of agents are going to go like, just bomb it, a number. There's ways where you can handle the commission objection or the question, like I like to call it, and be able to work together with the seller, yeah. right? And it seems like the worst situation to happen in the process of a sale is no conversation, mm -hmm. right? It's like if the person just doesn't want to ask you any questions or it's just, mm -hmm. that's almost like the death of the, <laughs> of the close, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like the, 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 the conversation, the objection is a good thing because it gives you an opportunity to show the person, hey, you know, it's not pulling wools over your eyes. You know, I want to be as transparent and as possible and answer as many questions as possible. Exactly. So, you have to be okay with the questions yeah. and you got to smile, not, right? Because you want to feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, the other person is not going to feel comfortable as well. I got to say, that's a very important incredibly important point that you make mm -hmm. about the energy yeah the positive energy and there is a fake smile and there's a real smile mm -hmm. and i in conversing with different people i can totally see a huge significant difference you know when you i mean my viewers try it yeah when you have a legitimately genuine smile and you're presenting who you are the interaction and the relationship is so much more deeper and it can and again you know there's nothing wrong with making a relationship uh, friendship with the person that you're working with right I mean nobody is saying hey I'm pulling wools over people's eyes and I'm trying to sell you something that you don't need yeah. there's nothing wrong with establishing a, a friendship and a relationship through being positive so I wanted to at least for the benefit of our viewers absolutely how important that positive yeah. happy energy is absolutely and 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 actually caring about the other person, right? And you said something very, very important, motivation, right? If you, if you don't know what really, what they need, you're not gonna be able to serve them. And that's the reason you ask a lot of questions to be able to serve them at a high level, right? And if you don't care about them, you don't care about their goals, their objectives, then you're not gonna be able to serve them, mm. right? And having that, good energy that uh being positive and being um i like to call it the coming source right the coming force uh into the situation because a real estate transaction can can get a little uh you know 
a lot of emotions involved. But if you're the common force and you guide them through the transaction, they're just going to refer you more business. You know, today I got a call from a client that I sold. My first house was an open house. The first uh, deal that I closed was from an open house and I happened to sell that house. And she called me up and she's looking to sell her condo. And the only reason I was able to get that call back is just providing good customer service and caring about their goals, their objectives, and what they're looking to accomplish. Nothing ego-based, but more service-based. Right? I, I love that statement that you just made because I think, you know, the sales industry gets a bad rap and I don't know what it is, maybe movies, maybe shows that kind of perceive people that are selling something kind of like, oh, this person's trying to sell me something, this person's not real, doesn't really want to be my friend, but it's, it seems like it's so far from the truth. I don't know if you Absolutely. have that same perspective. Because it's like the best people that sell things are the ones that are looking to build relationships with everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't want to buy the product, no big deal. Mm -hmm. At least we're friends. It's not a big deal. And if you do want to buy the product, I'm going to give you the best damn service ever because we're friends. So yeah. that's kind of how I perceive the sales industry. You know? mm -hmm. And you really hit it on the, the neck as, as, as to why you're so successful. Yeah. And, and people do business with people that they like and they trust. And the only, when, the only way they can like you and trust you is if you care about them, mm -hmm. if you ask good questions. Sometimes I have these discussions with agents and I ask them, okay, so they have a listing appointment, they're getting ready to go to the listing appointment. And I ask them, why are they selling? And they don't know. Where are they moving? They don't know, right? There's a reason behind selling the home. There's something behind that. So you gotta dig deeper. You gotta ask the W questions, the where, the why, right? Where are you moving to? Why is that important to you? What is that gonna do to your family? Right? And find out, really dig deep on motivation because this is a big transition. And if you care about, maybe selling a home is not the best option, but you're trying to get that listing instead of doing a better service for them. Yeah. Right? As, as, as a person, they're going to like you and trust you. So when the time is right, they're going to call you back. Yeah. Sometimes I tell seller, sellers, this is not the right time for you to sell right because there's not enough motivation they a lot of sellers when we had the interest rates at two or three percent they just wanted to get their home on the market for whatever reason and i asked them once we sell the property where are you looking to move ah that's something i still need to think about mm. right they didn't have any motivation so there's no need there's a difference between people that want to sell and people that need to sell we got to focus on the people that need our services. Right. And you know what? Sometimes maybe the personality isn't there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, in any sales position, it's like, you know, it's always great to be friendly and positive. Mm -hmm. and, but you know what? Some people that you, you deal with, they don't like positive people. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I mean, let's talk about that too. You know, is it... Uh, ever strategic to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't work together because for some reason, maybe my personality just doesn't work for you. And yeah, I mean, can you that tell is me a great question? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's something that I follow the, that's called uh, the personality styles, right? There's the driver, the dominant person. Mm -hmm. There's the expressive. Usually the expressive are going to be all over the place. They're going to wear bright colors, right? The analyticals, they want to read everything in a page before they sign something. And there's the amiables. They just want to be nice, right? So when I'm asking the pre-qualifying questions, I try to determine what type of personality this person is so I can match their personality or be closer to it, right? But then when it comes to people that don't want to work with me or they're being nasty on the phone or maybe they're not cooperating, mm -hmm. I politely decline the opportunity. Yeah. Or even if they're bad people right and it's yeah. like maybe i shouldn't work with these people because they're doing shady things or yeah you know, don't want to get involved in it right yeah and that's the reason of the pre-qualifying questions that i talk about it all the time we set an appointment for tomorrow at four there are a couple of uh important questions that i would like to ask you so i can better serve you and then you ask those questions 
in those questions, you're going to determine motivation. You're going to determine uh, if there's an opportunity. Maybe the mom is a real estate agent or maybe they're doing it for sale by owner. They just want to have you over. Right. So you want to know a little bit more in that process. While you're asking these questions, you're going to be able to determine whether you want to serve this person or not. Wow. Right. And that is I that, and it's very simple. Because at that moment, you're going to know whether you want to work with this person or maybe just politely decline the opportunity and let them know that you're not going to be the right agent for the job. Mm. And that's okay. And that's how I start my presentation. When Once we do the pre qual I'm in front of a seller. I let them know that one of three things is going to happen. Number one, we'll decide to work together. Number two, for whatever reason, you might decide not to work with me. And number three, if I feel I'm not going to be able to serve you, I'll politely decline the opportunity. Mm. And any of those three is fine with me. And they should be fine with you as well. Yeah. Fair enough? That's very fair. So I'm, I'm pulling that away and I'm making the decision that it's okay if you decide not to work with me or I decide not to work with you. Right? Because it happens. Yeah. Sometimes it happens that you decide not to work with someone. Yeah, because mm. at, at what point where... I'm going to work with this person. I'm going to force this relationship to happen, even mm -hmm. though, you know, maybe it's maybe some personality clashes and it happens. Chemistry is real. Mm -hmm. Right. And how much extra stress are you adding on to your life? Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's just not working out. How much more is it going to cost you in all the other areas of your life? Because you're kind of forcing this, this relationship to happen. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Mean, that's important. Very, very. Well, all personalities mix. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes what happens is a lot of people are attached to that commission check. Mm. And I learned that never be attached to the outcome, right? Never be attached to the outcome. You have to let them go because that negative personality of a client is affecting not only you and your mindset to do your job and find other people that need your help and want your help. But it's also affecting your family. Mm. It's affecting your kids. You're not in a good position mindset wise. So you're translating that bad energy mm -hmm. from just one client. Right. And that's keeping you from achieving more and going after yeah. more clients. Yeah. I can tell that from experience to the viewers. As soon as I determine or I notice that a relationship is not going good, even after I signed the agreement with the, with the seller and I feel the energy then I have to make an executive decision of canceling that agreement because that one listing is going to cause me not to get five or 10 listings more. Yes. It's right. Just monopolizing, you know, your brain in a not so good way. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the, the, the secret sauce there is your mindset. You got to keep it strong all the time. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing today to keep your mindset strong? Yeah. What books are you reading? I don't drink anymore. Right. It's been years since I stopped drinking, but that was one of the things that I used to do. And my mindset wasn't strong. Yeah. Right. I drink more water. Um, I read a lot, a lot of self-development books. I always like to read. Um, one of my favorite books is Chop Wood, Carry Water. <laughs> uh, Joshua Melkath. It's a very interesting book because it's going to show you it's going to show you that it takes time to build that foundation. Yeah. But if you do it every day, it's going to happen. Yeah. So I, in my past life, I was a public school teacher and I used to tell my, my students, if you want to walk a thousand steps, you have to take one step, one step, step at a step, time, one step at a time. And eventually you hit a thousand steps, right? Okay. You don't want to read a hundred pages. Okay. Then don't read five pages, you know, and then take a break and come back and read another five pages. Eventually it kind of builds up, right? Yeah. So what you're essentially saying is if you look at your life as a thousand steps or even like a pie, a pie chart, do you want to fill your life up every day with positive things, you know, a mindset of I'm going to be better today than that was yesterday. And suddenly you're going to have a fulfilling life. Exactly. Would you say that's like the, at least one of the secret sauces, the mindset secret sauces. How can you keep your mindset strong, positive? and be disciplined on those actions, right? That is definitely for me, the secret sauce mm. without mindset, you're not going to be able to do anything. And when it comes to mindset, we think, okay, so do I have to have a, a mindset that's strong? And you know, how can I make this decision faster? But really it's about 
feeling good, right? Number one. I mean, when you eat a burger and you, you look fitted, right? You're not eating like a bunch of food that is going to make you feel like crap, right? You're eating healthy stuff because you're going to feel good about it, right? Same thing with what you read or what you watch in the TV, right? You want to get good things. Same thing with people. We were talking about energy, bad energy, good energy, right? You're hanging out with people that have bad energy, then your energy is going to be bad. So hang out with people that have a good energy, mm. that are going to be positive, yeah. that are going to support your goals and objectives, right? Yeah. So mindset comes in different ways. What you eat, the small decisions that you make, should I eat these chicken fingers or should I eat my salad with, you know, my chicken, grilled chicken? Right? Should I drink my beer and have a good time? Or should I drink water instead? Right? Small decisions. That gets your mindset going mm. because you're making a small decisions. Mm. Small steps. A small steps. Eating a the whale baby one, steps. one yeah. bite at a time. You eventually eat the whole whale. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. And um, have you heard of 75 Heart before? No. Okay. So this is a great program to do if you want to have a strong mindset, have greed. 75 hard. Hard? H-A-R-D? H-A-R-D. Yep, 75 hard. Okay. You haven't heard, right? No. So this program is, is definitely going to give you greed, self-control. It's going to help you with time management. It's going to make you feel better mm. about yourself. It's going to be challenging, but if you accomplish that program and the phase one, phase two, and phase three, you're definitely going to have a strong mindset. Mm. Um, 75 heart consists of drinking one gallon of water per day wow. for 75 days straight, following a diet, whatever diet you decide to do, whether it's keto or whatever diet, but you have to follow for 75 days, reading a self-development book for uh, 10 pages a day for 75 days straight working out twice a day for 45 minutes each separated four hours so you cannot do 45 and 45 you gotta wait at least for four hours one you can do inside and the second workout has to be outside mm. no matter what okay okay you can do both of them outside if you want but one of them has to be outside and uh, taking a progress picture from day one to day 75. 75 days straight. Mm. No alcohol, of course, no drugs, right? right? <laughs> and, um, and if you follow this program, you're going to learn a lot from yourself, mm. right? Because just making room, think about this, making room to work out twice a day, 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes at night, whatever it is, or afternoon, Right, finding that time after having a busy schedule, having kids, right? Drinking a gallon of water, it teaches you time management yeah. because you don't want to start your gallon of water at 4 p.m. because you're never going to get done, right. right? And then you're going to be going to the bathroom every single time at night. Yeah. You're not going to have a good sleep. Right. Reading 10 pages a day, it's going to help you in whatever area you want to be better at. Mm. Self-development book. It cannot be stories or fiction. It has to be a self-development book. It's going to give you that routine that you need, that consistency to get better every single day and learn something new. Uh, not drinking. I mean, there's lots of benefits of not drinking alcohol. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't do this program because they don't want to stop drinking. Mm. I was one of them. And I made the decision to do it a couple of years ago. And since then, my second week, it was hard because I, I was craving for that beer, to be honest. And then after I made that decision of doing 75 hard and not breaking, I was very committed to completing. When, I, when, when 75 hard ended, I stopped drinking. I wow. didn't want to drink anymore. Wow. I was like, I don't need this. Right? That's incredible. How, how did you feel after when you completed it? Well, number one, mindset, I was very strong. But number two, I was so fitted. Because mm -hmm. I was at 195. 
and then I was at 165. Wow. So mindset wise, I was very strong. And the second part was my body, right? I was feeling great. I was in shape. So for me, that was, that was a huge thing. Uh, That's incredible. So the process of following this program, it sounds like the difficulty is not necessarily what the program is because you just told our viewers in something like, you know, five minutes of what the program is. The difficulty is actually all the soft skills and ingraining it into your personality from following the program. Exactly. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and, and that helps you. That you, You're going to learn a lot from yourself, to be honest. Like, today I'm on my second, because there's, there's 75 hard, then there, we have phase one, phase two, and phase three, which includes other stuff, oh, wow. right? Like a cold shower and all of that. Um, but I know that every time I do this pro- process and this program, it's, I feel amazing changes you it changes me i feel amazing it, it makes me feel better uh because i'm doing something that sometimes i don't feel like doing right it's hot outside to go for a run for 45 minutes right mm. what else can you do right outside mm. unless you carry your dumbbells right you can either go run or walk right um my wife always says if you're already 45 minutes outside instead of walking run <laughs> right <laughs> at a high level right you're not going to get those 45 minutes back. Yeah. So definitely helps. I encourage people to check it out. It's free. I mean, there's, you don't pay anything. That's something that you do. Yeah. Uh, 75 hard, I guess, dot com or something. Just Google it. Yeah. Thank and you'll you find so much. It. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. So coming back to this, you know, the downswing mm-hmm. and within this, this point in your life where you know, it started as an upswing, you know, mm-hmm. and you developed all these amazing skills. How long, how long do you think it took for you to, it, it kind of fell together for you, these skills, this presentation? I mean, you know, did it take a long time? Was it a very hard process? Yeah. Great question. Well, w- with the skills, I mean, in this market, especially, we know, right? Only the skills get picked. So if you don't know how to present, if you don't know how to have a conversation with a client over the phone first to be able to set up an appointment, then pre-qualify that appointment to be able to know motivation, time frame, opportunity, and, and see if you're going to be able to serve them and then present. If you're not able to do that right now, you have to start putting your game on. It takes 90 days to be able to take listings. Mm. In 90 days, if you learn the skills necessary, you'll be able to take listings. And I did that. For 90 days, two hours per day, I was role playing, practicing my scripts. I was looking at the camera. I remember at that time, this happened exactly during COVID when I, I went from selling seven houses a year to right now close and pending 26, right? And it's only six months. It happened during COVID because they told us we couldn't meet people. So I said, I need to get good at listing presentations with people that I don't know and over Zoom. So I recorded myself many times giving that presentation and practicing the smile, the nodding, and making sure they signed agreement via Zoom with people I didn't know. And it took me 90 days to master that. and there's a few things that you can do. You can use this notepad, yep. right? Write down your listing presentation every single day. And it's going to take you about 30 minutes right. for 30 days straight. The second thing that you can do is chant that presentation. Just go over the lines as fast as possible. And the third thing that you can do is role play with somebody else right. that has the same mindset as you. Because if some people tell you, no, you don't need that, you can still sell a lot of homes. Well, nobody knew Mike Miguel. I was coming from a warehouse. Nobody's going to knock on my door and say, hey, you're Michael Miguel. I want to sell my house with you. I need to learn the skills. And if I had the skills, people are not going to be asking me how much do you charge, how long is your agreement. They're just going to connect with me. And they're, what's next? What do I do? All you need to do is simply sign here, Mr. Seller. Wow. So you, you went all in, you 
had that motivation, you know, you're not going back at this mm -hmm. point. Which again is a consistent characteristic that I find mm -hmm. with highly successful people. They go all in. There's no going back, right? Yeah. And yeah, it, it seems also another consistent characteristic that I find, um, not just from people that I've interviewed, but from listening to you know other podcasts to watching other videos of top producing agents they all say something very interesting and similar to what you're saying start now because it takes a few months two months three months four months five months for you to finally get your first commission and you gotta start you somewhere. gotta start yeah and go all in the longer you take to make that decision the more you're delaying your success so if you start today, right? If you start today, 90 days from now, you're going to start seeing the results. Mm -hmm. The problem with us humans is we always want instant gratification. Yeah. We're not willing to wait and do the work now in order to get paid later, right? And skills is like this. We think, oh, it's not working. I'm making these calls. I'm following up with these people. I'm having 10, 20 presentations and nothing is going on. Right now, for, for every 10 listing appointments that I go, my average is 7.5. Don't ask me about this, 7.5 is half, but that's my average, 75%. Wow. Of every 10 listing appointments that I go, 75% I take. Wow. Because I master the prequel, I master the presentation, and the closing is a natural ending of the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. And the presentation is a follow-up of all the prequel that I did on the phone. All the questions that I asked. Yeah, and this was a direct result of you focusing 90 days, 90 days. committing yourself, disciplining yourself to really hone these skills. Yeah. And I'm sure, as you were mentioning before, you're constantly growing and self improving and reading other yeah. books. So from there on, all the other 90 days is just a explosive Michael Miguel, right? Yeah. Because you're just constantly growing and but it starts with that first step and everything it's gonna take it's gonna be a 90 day cycle whatever you're gonna do right sure. if you want to have apps do it for 90 days <laughs> right. Right? right right and you're gonna start seeing the results maybe it's not true. the fir first week if you want to look healthier thinner feed it eat healthy for 90 days yeah. right and you're gonna start seeing it's these small choices the small decisions that you gotta make every single day on a consistent basis that is going to get you to the results that where you want to be, right? 100%. I want to ask you, mm -hmm. if you had a time machine and you were able to go back and talk to Michael Miguel 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, what would you tell Michael Miguel 10 years ago? Yeah, that's a great question. And I always ask this question, you know, I wasted 14 years of my life, but then I wouldn't be the person that I'm today or the father that I'm today or the husband that I'm today or the leader or the friend that I'm today if I haven't gone through that, right? Now I mean being able to help other agents as well change their mindset and be able to make these decisions sooner. Uh, sometimes we're stuck on making that decision like you said, right? How do we get unstuck? And the only way we get unstuck is about having an accurate assessment of reality, of what's going on right now. So think about this. I always tell, I was sharing an agent, right? If you're living in this part, like I, I wouldn't imagine me being in the same position eight years after what I went through, right? Mm -hmm. In the same studio, right? Converted to a one bedroom apartment, two cats. My son is not a newborn anymore. Mm -hmm. He's an eight year old boy, mm -hmm. still sleeping in the crib. Right. And my daughter would be 13 on the bank bed. Oh, my wife and I on the bottom. If I didn't make that decision, I wouldn't be where I am I, am, I, am I today, right? So it's about making the decisions and sometimes you need somebody else to be able to help you mm. making these decisions. If yeah. you cannot make it on your own, you need somebody else in your life that is gonna push you, that is gonna keep you accountable. Yeah. There's gonna be days that you're not gonna wanna do it because I have agents that they tell me, I don't wanna role play today. Or, or, or tell me, find excuse, right? Mike, I'm not available today. Can we postpone until next week? No, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to ask you questions first to find out what's going on that you cannot do it, yeah. but it's because you don't feel like doing it. Then I'm going to bring you back right, right. because 90 days from now, you're going to be in the same position because you weren't consistent. Right. Right. You value, you really value your 
past experiences and you wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for your past experiences and yeah as a result of those past experiences it makes you the great supportive leader that you are today right i mean that's that's definitely looking back but moving forward does it excite you at as far as what the next 90 days will bring knowing what you know now that that is a 90 day cycle and yeah. you're constantly improving does it excite you that hey in three months i'm gonna be another michael miguel I mean, yeah let's talk a little bit about that yeah no that's that's always a very very exciting question that i ask myself all the time i think that now the challenge is how far can you go right and we all have that opportunity to grow and we all have um the desire to grow right some of them grow faster some of them slower but i always think about uh being better not only in business but also as a father as a son mm -hmm. as a friend as a leader right and 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 be able to help other people accomplish the same thing mm -hmm. so to answer your question i have my goals right every 90 days uh and they keep growing right they keep growing because as soon as i hit one goal then i want more mm -hmm. i want more and not because I just want more, it's because how far can I go? Does it give you a... Am I capable? Yes. It gives you that feeling it of gives satisfaction me, that, exactly. you that you now have that you didn't have. I didn't have before. When you were with the Keller Williams Award. Yes. I, I got the award and that was it. But now it's different because now how I see growing and it's, it's sharing. Like what I learned or the experiences that I had it's more of helping others. Yeah. And these could be friends or real estate fellows that I have in my downline that I help them grow as not only as real estate agents, but as humans as well. Mm. I help my son who is eight years old playing soccer, uh, having a stronger mindset, right? In, in being able to uh, perform at a high level, right? If he's going to play for an hour, he has to give you a hundred percent of his effort because mm. two things you cannot buy is effort and attitude. Yeah. Right? So I tell my son, he's not the best skill because he started, but he's going to give you a hundred percent every single time. And he's going to have the attitude and he's going to say, thank you coach for correcting me. Yeah. And it seems like the theme of your life, right? Uh, effort being commitment hundred percent in right yeah and then attitude being you know motivation right yeah. energy attitude having the good energy yeah. Yeah. right uh caring about people yeah. not just me 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 right it's caring about someone else that's making this transition right. right so i my goal now for me to grow is to help other people including my family my daughter and the people that i cross path with Right. That's growing for me. That's because I can sell uh, right now. We're on track on 50. My goal is to get a hundred, but then that's going to change. So that's like the diploma or, or the award, right? right. That's going to change to 150, maybe 200, 300 properties. But then the feeling that I get helping my son become a better person and building his character, my daughter become a better person, building her character helping other agents discover what they can do with the, themselves and being able to provide a better lifestyle and not only guide their family and the loved ones yeah. better. I think there's no price tag to that. 100%. There's no, no award to that. 100%. And, you know, Michael, I want to say, I'm sure at this point, there is no conversation I, mean, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. There's no conversation you're having with your daughter about, hey, dad, can you buy this? How come we can't buy this couch, right? <laughs> I'm sure now it's like, hey, we, we're good. Let's get the couch, right? I'm, yeah, we do have the couch now, yeah. <laughs> right? But it's funny because the goals change, yeah. right? The goals change. Now you don't want a bigger couch. Yeah. Now, a couple of months ago, they wanted a room with all their music equipment because they my, my son and my daughter, my daughter plays drums and guitar and my son plays drums. So they, wanna, they wanted a room with all the music equipment. Right. So I remember putting that on my, 
on my letter to myself, I wrote a letter to myself that I wanted more than 100 reviews online. Right now, I think we have about 100, 200 total all over, right? Five star reviews. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then one of the goals was to have a room for my son and my daughter music equipment yeah. that has all the instruments. Now we have that, right? Back before was to buy a house. I have that, right? So the goals keep changing. They keep, you keep adding more stuff to the list and I'm sure you can relate, right? You keep adding things to the list and, and that is a good feeling, yeah. but it doesn't end, mm -hmm. right? And um, helping other people, it definitely uh, gives me a lot of satisfaction, not only sellers, but also other agents as well. Yeah, that's, that's amazing, Michael, because, you know, it's like uh, you, you came from humble beginnings in uh, Bolivia, mm -hmm. you know, looking at that $1,500 check, yeah. having nothing, making, I think you said $3 a day, you yeah. know, to now you're, you really worked extremely hard. I mean, and became who you are today. And it's, there's nothing more American about your experience. Like, like American like, dream, right? The, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like the American dream. It is, it is wonderful. And on top of all of that, you know, doing it the right way, being honest about it, not having to rip anybody off, making the mark, a positive mark that you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Like on top of all of that, wow, Michael, I, I honestly, this is, I don't know how else better to end the, the podcast on that note, you know, not just going for success, but making the world better in your own way, using your own skills, right? Oh boy, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. If you're interested in the real estate industry, if you're looking for support and guidance, Michael Miguel is your man. Michael, thank you so much. I'm gonna, thank you, I'm gonna yep. include all your information in the link in the description um, along with this video. And yeah, Michael, thank you again. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by Jing's Mortgage Team. Jing's Mortgage Team is a team of real estate mortgage professionals whose mission is to help anyone with their real estate needs. If you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, refinance your home, have credit issues, or in need of an investment loan, we can definitely help you. If you're looking for a real estate agent, we know the best of the best real estate agents. Visit the link below for more information.